do. Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Stop Playing podcast. It's your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. Y'all already know that I believe you can make the money and you can get the honey. You can have it all as long as you are willing to work. And today is a special show. You guys are in for a treat because it's always a blessing anytime we get a husband and wife dynamic duo in the studio so before i introduce today's amazing guest i gotta remind y'all that this week's episode is brought to you by pool yo card i need like some effects that's like pool yo card but in the meantime i'll do it for myself pull your card is a fun filled party game that adds a little razzle dazzle to your next game night girls night vacation vacation family reunion however you like to get down grab your deck of pull your card cards at pullyourcard.com check out the show notes in the description to grab the link and at the end of the show we gonna get into this game okay we're gonna play a quick round so you can see just how fun it is but without further ado i have the pleasure of introducing you to today's guests who happen to be a happily married y'all are like newlyweds still right Mm -hmm. that newlywed okay they're, so they're still honeymooning okay um but this is darlene and alfonso jackson welcome to the show hi choreo thanks hi. for having us thanks for having us definitely. i'm excited so i really am excited anytime i get to talk to a couple because i know you know black love exists mm -hmm. i know you know that that there are so many strong um couples but it's not often that the world gets to see them and right. we get to display black right. love and positivity um, from our community. So right. I'm excited to have y'all here. Um, so you all are both artists. I do want to give you an opp opportunity to introduce yourselves because I like to put respect on people's name and y'all got some long resumes. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. You want me to go first? Or you want well, to go first? Um, which camera y'all want me to look at? That one right there. I'm Alfonso Akhenaten Jackson. Uh, one of my jobs is I am a technologist full time, which is I work with paper chemicals. I work with a whole bunch of scientists. But um, my side job or my after hours job is acting, modeling, writing, do a whole bunch of other different things, trying to awaken the consciousness of our people. See, I wasn't even gonna say it like that. That's why I gotta let y'all do y'all thing. <laughs> yes. Well, I am Darlene Jackson. Everybody knows me as Darlene McCoy up until this year. Yes. But um, nationally syndicated radio host, um, first black woman with a, ni a national nighttime syndication. Um, also a national recording artist. And um, I j recently um, inducted into the National Black Radio Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. And um, you know, just um, out here doing my thing. Doing your thing. I also own a, um, an entertainment company called Araxi entertainment okay where i have myself and and uh, my son as as two artists my son is a um, hip-hop artist and of course i'm an urban inspirational artist so what is urban inspiration so is that like gospel with a little the gangster it's that and, and you kind of put it together mm -hmm. you know it's it's too inspirational to be r b got you but too r b to be gospel got you you know okay. this has got the sound but it's got the vibe just good vibe music okay feel yeah. good music yes feel good gangster music i'm gonna have to check it out right no cussing no cussing not now not yet maybe one day maybe, later. maybe later okay <laughs> So I'm super excited um, to have two artists in the building. We all the time we talk to, you know, just like your run of the mill entrepreneurs who right. are doing, you know, business, I guess the traditional way. But mm -hmm. two artists, I think that adds an extra like layer mm -hmm. to any type of relationship. Um, definitely a marriage. So I do want to get into that. But okay. first, I want to talk about you know, business stuff. Okay. I like to say we do business first and then we get in your business I love next. It. So Let's because go. you've been in the media space, in radio for mm -hmm. so long, mm -hmm. what would you say has changed the most over your career, like that you've seen? Well, I will say um, the gospel music industry has changed a lot since I've been a part of, um, of it. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of different because when I was offered, you know, the position, I was 
really afraid to do gospel music because, you know, um, as an urban inspirational artist, my music was being played on urban AC and R&B stations. Mm -hmm. And when they asked me to become a part of the gospel world, I was like, but y'all already don't like me. Why would you want me on your radio show? It's pressure, a little bit of pressure, right? So, but... What I love is that there has been a very positive change. Okay. Um, expanding the sound of gospel to where it reaches more than just church folk, mm-hmm. more than just people that just, you know, need something from God. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is really, it, it really feels good. It, you know, because I, I have a big personality um, and I like to talk about life. I mm-hmm. like to talk about a lot of different things. So I really feel like um, just being there, I think that people just kind of adapted to an, a big a personality yeah. that that brings something different, you know what I mean. So, um, and it's just been it's really been a fun journey. Yeah, so far. Are the are the gospel people judgy? Yes, they. It's a lot of them that are. Hmm. But you have to you got to be like the type person that cares what somebody else got mm-hmm, to say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and that, I that seems that. like pressure though. <laughs> like I feel like the. And it should not be this way, but yeah. I feel like religious spaces sometimes put you in such a tight box That's of true. what I expect of you, what you can do, what I don't want to hear from you, what you should be wearing, what you should be saying. That part. So it's... You know, it's like, and but, that's but why we I love the time. Lord. You know, but we here to love the Lord and heal the people. But you right. want to box me in and tell me what I can and can't do. So I imagine that you know, yeah. it's not always easy. But you, you got a strong, you got a, not a strong personality, but you're a strong person. So you're yeah. not, you know, yeah. you don't. Well, let I, that I've anything. I've known God before they know me. Hello, do you see what I'm saying? And um, I've known God a long time, yes, and I ma'am. have a real relationship. And mm-hmm. and those people that are just learning. Who I am and getting to meet me, I just let them have your time. Mm-hmm. Let them but figure I it know. out. Yes, so <laughs> I love that. Okay, so Alfonso, talk to me about being a. You didn't say scientist, did you say scientist? Or you said technologist. Yeah, technologist. We yeah. ain't never had no technologists in the studio, so break that down for us. Tell me what that means. Well, yeah, I work with a lot of scientists too, but basically, we just accumulate data, I'm testing resources. We work with paper chemicals, polymers, a whole bunch of different. Um, you know things in the in the industry, oil and gas. So my 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 main position is to help out the scientists. So gotcha. the scientists, they'll have a project and whatever the mill needs, they'll ask them what what the uh, what the answers are. We go through our testing and then we hand them the data and that's the results that they need in order to use the chemicals to help their paper their paper or their their polymers or whatever they need. See, when I was doing my research, because y'all know I got to do my research, so I was doing a little digging, and I knew that you were a scientist. Mm-hmm. I was thinking more so along the lines of like studying the people, you know, because mm-hmm. because I feel like woke is like that's such an overused term these days, but very spiritual, right? right? right. I told you I was doing a little dig and I was checking Down out your girl. Instagram, doing, that's what I'm doing talking about. Yes. So that's where I was going. Like you're studying people, you're studying culture, you're studying, you know, not necessarily like numerology and things like that but right. knowing what's going on do you dibble and dabble or is that just an assumption oh, no, I mean? that's absolutely i mean my job is just my job gotcha what i do that's my life journey right there gotcha so trying to understand ourselves our people understand the multitude of people mm-hmm. there's a diversity out here that's happening mm-hmm. and one of the issues that separate us is that we don't try to understand one another facts so what i'm trying to do is i mean because when you really break everything down we look at the colors and we're, we're fascinated by the colors, but that's the term hue, right? Hue man. So there's there's beauty and diversity. Mm-hmm. But when you strip away the colors, we can all resonate on the same level if we're willing to see each other on that same level. So were y'all on the same page in terms of like spirituality versus religion or whatever you... And I don't think everybody, again, has to put themselves in a box or label themselves as this or as that, but mm-hmm. whatever you feel like you are, whatever you feel like you are, were y'all on the same page with that or was it like a conversation and a like we have to... Like a mutual understanding or growing together type of thing? I th- You kind of answered it in, in a sense because, you know, he had this this preconceived notion that I wouldn't accept him for who he is because it's and, that judgy thing he loves you right uh, well of course i mean i'm in gospel mm-hmm. and and that was the connotation i was actually afraid of and mm-hmm. in getting into radio but um as i said i've known god for longer than i've even been on radio mm-hmm. so um but at one point 
you know, when he told me, I don't believe in God. You know, I was like, oh, this is about to get real juicy. Okay. okay. Thank you. We Thank you for throwing me that little that, alley brother. Okay. What you talking about? But, um, but basically what it was, I think that, you know, he had come, he was on a journey. I am on a journey. Mm-hmm. But then us coming together, um, we got an opportunity to understand each other better. So there is a label called atheist that people use for people that don't believe in God because that's that's the go-to. Right. But I don't believe, I think that he was a theist, this someone that is just questioning mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and, and asking a bunch of questions and seeking. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with him seeking because what I know is if you seek him, you'll find him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, I'll, okay, seek. Keep mm-hmm, seeking. Mm-hmm. And all the truth that you need to find, keep find finding it. it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, gradually it felt like, oh, okay, because there was a lot of things that I understood about what, you know, his plight was, and he understood about what my plight was on mm-hmm. a lot of things because, you know, maybe I was in a box. Maybe even though I am, you know, kind of out there, you know, everybody thinks I'm the little wild and crazy gospel church girl whatever um i still was in a box Mm -hmm. i I had i had some understanding too that i needed to i needed to expand my understanding gotcha of all that god is Mm -hmm. and you know him coming into my life me being in his life we were able to walk together and explore and and we're continuing to explore Mm -hmm. this journey together with god yeah and sharing because i think everybody's Everybody at these days, I think we do have a little bit more freedom and flexibility mm-hmm. to explore and to say, I don't subscribe to only this one thing, or I take a piece from this and a piece from that, and I'm yeah. developing my own belief system versus I'm just going to repeat what my mama told me, or I'm yeah. just going to repeat what the pastor told me. Yeah. But I will say that that is surprising. I'll say surprising mm. for someone who... I feel like even when you say you don't believe in God, you do believe in a higher power. You believe, you know, like you believe in something. You might mm-hmm. not call it God, but something. But for someone who does not share your belief to literally be with the gospel lady. Like, how, <laughs> how, how is that for you? Do you ever feel like, well, I guess you said he kind of felt like you wouldn't be accepting. But what mm-hmm. has been your experience? Well, for me, um, I, I try not to box myself in. That's one of the things that I understand that. All of these modalities, these metrics, they're used to divide people. Facts. So we have to be able to see through that. And um, you know, once upon a time, they told they told people that God was on the mountain, right? It was in the book. Then they said God was in the cloud. Then they said God was all around. But they never tell you that God is in the mirror. You know what I mean? I say is in you. Yeah. Yep. So once you understand that, then you can accept people for what they believe or, or who they are. Because you understand everybody's on their own individual journey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, people could have labeled me whatever they wanted to, but it's because I didn't, I didn't believe what you believed or maybe the understanding is different. But once upon a time, there was no such word as God. Like when you go back to ancient Kemet, that word was synonymous with nature, man, and spirit. Mm-hmm. It was all synonymous in one word. So we, as a civilization or a culture, have you wanted to, when we start to progress through the decades and the generations, something changed. Mm-hmm. And I wonder what was it? Mm. We know what it was. We know what it was. Some things, we, changed, some things definitely changed. And it still changed. Yeah. And like you said, though, it, it does, in my opinion, come down to religion and titles just mm-hmm. kind of separating people. It's mm-hmm. just like, I'm going to say I'm this. And when I say I'm this, that means I'm better than what you mm-hmm. say you are. And that means that my belief system is going to mm-hmm. get me to what I hope to be him. You know, like, it's just yeah. the whole thing that I think does end up being more divisive than You're right. bringing people together. And I, and I, like, for me, being in this space, I respect all of it. Mm-hmm. I respect my upbringing. I, I respect the church. I respect, you know, religion. I respect all of it because, just as Alfonso said, everybody is on a journey. Right. And people can make a choice mm-hmm. to stay here and camp out here. Or they could say, man, I know there's more to it than this. I'm going to just keep looking. And I'm just going to keep on receiving. You know what I'm saying? I'll keep on receiving all I I can because we're talking about God. Mm -hmm. We'll never get enough. Right. I don't care how long we live. We won't ever know everything. So I've always 
you know, been that person that will push the envelope a bit more. But to others, that means, oh, you're just a free spirit or whatever. And it's like, exactly what I'm trying to yes, be. Yes, thank you. Um, but it's to not me, an insult. It's a compliment. It's a definite compliment. But to me, that means that I can receive a lot more mm -hmm. than what I've been given. You know. So what kind of wedding ceremony did y'all have? Oh, it was so beautiful. Do you want to talk about it? You want me to talk about it? Look at your face. Yeah, yeah. Are we under NDA until we can talk We're about not under. Well, y'all under y'all well, I, I well, well, we did because you know it is on a major network. Okay, okay. And New question: yes. Was it a religious ceremony? Because that's what I really wanted. It to was know. spiritual. Okay, mm. okay. We actually had. We can't tell. We can't talk about this because it probably won't air. But um, we had a ceremony to blend our family, mm. where. He he made vows to my children and I made I vows to his children. It. And we asked, you know, I asked his children, could I crown him my king? And they gave me a crown and I, you know, and vice versa. He asked. So we not going to see this? I don't know if they're going to show that. They, I don't know. That I have sounds no idea. beautiful. It sounds like something we need to see. It is definitely something. Well, because we kind of made it up. <laughs> yeah, but that's why we need we to see it. But that's such it. a, you know, I've seen the pictures on Instagram where it's like, you know, if, if the woman had children previously, then the man will ask yeah. the family, can I yeah. be a part of the family? You know, not yeah. just can I marry you, but mm -hmm. I, I want y'all to know that I'm responsible for this entire right. this tribe now. It's not right. just me and your mom. And I just right. think that that is such like a powerful yeah. statement. And yeah. imagine how the children feel, you yes. know, being included because a, a lot of times stereotypically mm -hmm. it's like, who's this person coming in to yeah. fill in this role or whatever. Right. But that is such an inclusive way yeah. of like making everybody feel like this truly is a family and not like I'm coming to shake things up or exactly. whatever. And in our vows, we acknowledged our respect for like I had respect for the mother mm -hmm. and he has respect for the father. What are they, they there? What are they there? Okay. Look, uh, uh, no, no, okay. That's, it's like you, that way we draw the line. No okay, God. I got you. Okay, okay. <laughs> I did want to ask though about blended families, and I want to get both of your um, perspectives on this. Mm -hmm. But at at some point, you know, in I'll just speak for me and my homegirls. You know, we've had this conversation where before we had kids, mm -hmm. it was like, well, I don't want to date a man with kids. Now yeah. we are. <laughs> much older, you know, <laughs> that, that has kind of turned into like a, is that really going to happen type of thing? Mm -hmm. So it is so, um, it is such a common thing for you to meet and fall in love and marry someone who mm -hmm. does, you know, give you bonus children. Right. But it's not always the easiest situation right. to blend. So right. from both of you, what would you say is your advice mm -hmm. for someone who is stepping into a blended family? Well, I, I will say, um, you got to respect whatever relationship they have with their own parents, you know, um, and you don't want to step in the role, especially not too fast. It's saying, well, I'm going to be your stepmom mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. you know, I took an, an approach to befriend his children, you know, and just to be an extra voice if you need it. And, you know, to be a confidant if you need me to, I can be a mediator, but just to embrace, you know, especially his daughter, you know, where she was in her age and, you know, affirm some things for her. And that's just something that I would do for, of course, my own children. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you just, it's its a love thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wanted to make a relationship specifically with her and specifically with his son. And, um, and it's just been great. It's been great because I'm not, you know, stepping in the road. Well, I'm your daddy's lady yeah, now, yeah, so you're yeah. going to have to listen. No, I'm just not that. I'm not yeah. doing that. This is their father. And they have their mom, mm -hmm. you know. And it's like, you know, my respect, my love to your mom. I'm not going to ever be your mom. Right. Your mom is always going to be your mom. But if you would need, like, some extra something, I'm here. Got gotcha. you. Know, extra covering. Mm -hmm. I'm here for you. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, me, um, I just made the decision not to be overbearing. You know what I mean? I already have two children, but them, they're all adults at the end of the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can't look at any of them as, as their children. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes some men, some women could come into somebody's life who has children and they automatically feel like they have to assume this authoritarian role. But I'm looking at these young men and women like they're adults, the same way I, I treat my children. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, even with my children, I don't walk around like my son has a stepfather. And um, well, he he was his his mother's husband, so he's a, he's her ex now. But my son still has a relationship with him, mm-hmm. and it's like yo, I'm cool with it because you a grown man, he's a grown man. Like there's nothing I could do to step in between that. And I feel like when you when you start to understand that, you start to look at people as people, then you start to put some of the things aside. So I'm never gonna treat them like they're children. I'm gonna treat them like they're an adults. Mm-hmm. So would you say that it was probably a little easier or a smoother transition because they were adults? Absolutely. For sure. I think so. Yeah. 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 So were you both previously married? Yes. Yes. Okay. So another um, challenge that a lot of, um, I won't just say women, even though the majority of my audience is women. So I have this conversation with, you know, people who are divorced and who, sometimes have a hard time finding that faith to Mm -hmm. go back out there and Mm -hmm. you know figuring out because depending on how long you've been married Mm -hmm. it's a little crazy in these streets oh my god yes things have changed big time So sometimes (laughs) it's like the fear of going back out there i haven't dated since i was however young you know Mm -hmm. and so what would be your advice for someone who does find themselves now you know maybe a decade or two later having to go back out there and you know it's like being in the employment unemployment line after you didn't yeah. have a job for 30 years like i don't even know what to say in these interviews anymore i don't even know mm-hmm. what the you know what's going on out here so what would your advice be since y'all are newlyweds y'all yeah. found each other yes right yes. And so it's possible in atlanta i always like to say that That's did y'all right. meet in atlanta yes we did in atlanta where they say <laughs> there are no single straight black men it's a lie. They didn't go in that science lab. Listen, they ain't going to go. You went to the science lab? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, no, I was like, like wait a minute. Is that where they need to go? To no, the we, science lab? No, he showed up on my doorstep, but that's another story Come on, for, for real. Day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's a story for today. But we're going to okay. get, we gonna we get gonna that next. We're going to get to that next. We're going to get that next. Yes, yes. But for, um, I don't even feel like divorced. For women who have been previously yeah. married, what, well, what was your I, advice? I, I had been married for 17 years before. Okay. And um, I think that You have to acknowledge the fact that it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So you go through this this moment or a season where you find yourself again. You know, one of the things that I challenged myself with is to belong to myself. Mm. And I belonged to myself for a long time because all of those years I was his wife, Mm -hmm, their mm -hmm. mom, and then the worship leader at the church. And I had all of these duties, but I never served myself and belonged to myself and made choices for myself that, um, that helps me to grow. You know, I moved out of the big house in Gwinnett and went and and Brookhaven and got a nice little small two bedroom for me and my son. Mm -hmm. And I, I had to, to say, Hey, I am single. I do what single people do now. You know, I don't have to worry about going to the store and buying all of this food. Mm-hmm. It's only a little boy here. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I I savored my moment of being single and I healed. I had radical self-care. I would go and the things that I would say no to and feel guilty about, I stopped saying no to and I stopped feeling guilty about. If I want to go and, you know, get a massage and 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 go out of town and do all of this, I would go and travel. His daddy's here. Go mm-hmm. to your daddy's, little boy. <laughs> <laughs> and mama's out of here. You know, <laughs> I would go and just explore and find out the things that I like. Find out the things that I don't like. Get involved in some things that I never was able to. And I just became me mm-hmm. and he, I healed me I challenged myself um you know to to have some things uh you know f- for myself go buy the car that you want go do whatever you want to do the freedom you know, I just was free so I would date and I was like oh this is weird <laughs> you know what I mean and then I'm like Ugh, god it's hard out here and it was hard out here but the cool thing is well I, I'm gonna let him speak to okay. that too okay. let him have his moment and okay. then I'll come back <laughs> I mean, it's not really a moment. It's just, uh, I think we have to all understand the fact that we evolve. Yeah. So I'm not the same person who I was once upon a time. Yeah. So I had to get comfortable with who I was becoming and allow myself to become who I was becoming. Mm-hmm. And um, that comes with making certain decisions. I mean, you got to watch who you surround yourself around, mm-hmm. some of the things you do, some of the things that you make priorities. So once I started making those decisions, it started to cha- change the fabric of who I was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once you start making those type of changes, then you start looking at yourself, 
you, when you when you really really look in the mirror and you start to dissect yourself, you have to also ask yourself who do you want to be, mm-hmm. and if you want to be something other than you are, then you got to make some changes. Yeah. So that's what I did along the way. I made the changes. So the, having I think the the um, being intentional that's right. is like a common thread of what you both said being intentional yeah. um healing because yeah. you didn't say it but that looking in the mirror knowing what you want to change being right. intentional about it like mm-hmm. all of that i think is the healing process that a lot of people don't want to go through mm-hmm. they want to just find somebody or just get yeah. back in a relationship and just make it work and it's like but you're literally showing up as the same person right that it There's didn't work out with before soul. yeah and you have to heal that and it's <laughs> not fun so a lot no. of people shy away from it but mm-hmm. y'all heard it here <laughs> Ladies, you heard it here first. All right, now how he showed up at your doorstep, please. Honey, who's gonna tell the story? It's a good thing, right? We let her tell the story me. Tell he has a version, and I have a version. Whose is the closest mine, to the mine truth? Is the most, mine Yours is, is the most accurate. No, mine's is the most concise. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Had a, I had a friend who invited me over to her house. Um, previous, like, a few months prior to that moment. I, um, the same friend had invited me to actually, no, it wasn't the same friend. The same friend actually ended up being at the house, but somebody else invited me to a um, concert. And I had went to the concert and I wasn't into going to churches or nothing like that. But she's like, fine, I'll just come out, have a good time. So I went out and it happened to be, she was one of the performers um, with uh, Yolanda Adams and Kim Burrell. Kim Burrell. Mm-hmm. So I seen them and, and I remember her stepping on stage and she had on some jeans. She didn't look like everybody else in the arena, you know, or the establishment. So um, so I was, she kind of stood out to me. I was like, okay, she's pretty dope. So later on when my friend invited me to her house, I didn't know whose house she was inviting me to because mm-hmm. I didn't remember her name. But immediately when she answered the door, I was like, okay, I do remember it's her. It's her. Yeah, right, right. Isn't that something? It is. <laughs> he showed up on my doorstep. And wow. this is what's a trip. This is a trip. Because I got divorced in 2011. I met him in 2012. At the doorstep? At the doorstep. So I opened the door and I'm like, whoa. Hello. <laughs> Wait, but when did y'all start dating? In 2012? 2017. We okay, were so friends. bring me back around. Bring me yes. back. Oh, y'all were friends. Okay. We became friends. I think what got what got me is that he came in he has this he had this aura that he's just so chill he's such a chill guy you i think know. that's an aquarius thing yeah. my it's, husband's the same way it is, yeah it's, it's just they just cool yeah they cool like just that so laid back yeah so i'm like and fine dang anyway but i personally was not mentally in the space to embrace like, right right ooh, right right, you right. Know. but we became spades partners mm. and we beat everybody on the table that night and i was like Oh, he got to be okay. my partner. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we, you know, we became friends. Um, we would do. People would invite us to come and, and host events together back then in mm-hmm. 2012, and um, we were just friends, you know, and didn't really cross any lines up until, you know, I don't know. It's just something started happening in 2017, like. I just remembered how he looked at me one time because That'll do my it. kids already knew mm-hmm. him and they were already accustomed to him being friends mm-hmm. because when I moved from the big house to the small place, he came and moved me. He and my mm-hmm. daughter and everybody, we were doing it all together mm-hmm. because he was a friend, mm-hmm. you know? But, um, you know, there was one day when my daughter had my grandson and she'd asked him on Facebook, can you, um, cause he had this, this King me, Thing. He was like, can you make that for my for my baby or whatever? And he called me and was like, hey, I got the onesie for, for your daughter. So if you want to come by my job and pick it up. And I don't even know where he works. So he turns out he's five minutes from my job. So mm-hmm. I, I go. And when he handed it to me, it was something about the way he looked at me. I was like, let me, boy, let let me find out. Hey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ding, ding. That was a check. But then Mother's Day came that year. And he sent me a text and says... Happy Mother's Day, Queen. Love you, Leany. And he would call me Leany. And I'm like, and it was L O V E. Mm. I'm like, it wasn't L U V. You see, you know, you know, that's mm-hmm. a difference. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what is going on with Barnes? You know, so then um, the end of that month was the jazz festival downtown. And I thought I saw him because I was stro- I was at, like pushing the stroller with my grandson. We were looking at food trucks, getting food. I thought I saw him there. And I text him, I'm like, what you doing out here at the jazz festival? And he was like, I'm not there, but I mean, I can't be. What mm-hmm, you up to? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, what am I up 
<laughs> like, okay, catch this shot, baby. Catch said, don't this play shot. with it. Don't play with it, boy. So, <laughs> but we, you know, we connected that weekend, hung out, and discovered that we had real chemistry. And it just kind of started from there. You know, I'll never forget, you know, he went home and I was at home by myself. And I'm like, I wish he would come back. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he wants to come back over here. And uh, kind of grew from there. I love it. He is really cool because he ain't even by the eye when you you nah. He know this. That. He know this is the story. He like this is it. Mm-hmm. Was that accurate? Yeah, it's pretty accurate. Uh, <laughs> she, like, yeah, she she hit right. me up that day. You know, throughout the years, we would talk every now and then, and you know, she'll call me if she was having an event. Um, you know, I would check up on her, but I never pushed up really on. on on anything, you know, above that. We used to play games yeah, in the Russell. middle of the night. Yeah. Like against each other on your phone? Yeah. Russell. Mm-hmm. In the middle of the night, be like four o'clock, bring, oh, he wanna, man, here we go. Yeah. We just be playing. I, I think some of the problem with some of our, our, my brothers in our society is that a lot of them are hunters. Yeah. And it's like every woman that they come in contact with to them is a, is a meal. And I think we have to start changing that narrative because women are way more than that. Mm-hmm. I mean, and when you start to embrace who you are, then you start to respect who everybody else is. Mm. And that's what it was. I just try to respect her for who she was. I know she had a whole bunch of people tugging at her from a whole bunch of different directions. And, you know, Darlene this, Darlene that, could you do this, could you do that? But I always try to be somebody who, whenever she reached out to me, I just try to be a solid me. That's it. I'm not trying to be anything else besides that. I think the friendship, Yeah. I mean... Again, anytime I have a couple, I always have to ask, and that is what it comes back to. It. It's like we were just cool. Like right. we we like each other. Yeah. That's like a thing. Yeah. You know, it's it's such a different thing from like, oh, he just he's so fine, I just wanna you right. know, take his last name and all of the fairy tale type of thing. Yeah. But when it's like we just cool. We are cool. We could just hang out, we could just talk, we could just play games with each other and it's not no strings attached. Like we genuinely like each other. I think yeah. that, that is the most solid of foundations that you could possibly get. That's it. I mean, when he came to my house and we started playing all these songs from the 90s and then all the whole oh, I, oh, and then we start doing the little kick and I was like, oh, this is my dog right yeah, here. Yeah, like, yeah. we can really, like, get together and have a great time. Yes. We're not just Spades partners yeah. or Rosso partners. No, he's my dog, though. Okay, let's go, let's go, folks. I love it. <laughs> Too cool for school. Okay. Let's see if you're cool while we play this game of pull your cards. So hey. y'all are at an advantage because it's two of you. Okay. So we're going to do trivia. Okay. And I think y'all are going to do great at this, even though I always think everybody's going to do great and they don't be doing so great. Uh-oh. But we're going to see how you do. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to ask you a question. And you just do the best you can. All right. Whoever wants to answer, feel free. Question number one. Name three Famous actresses that Will Smith dated on Fresh Prince. On Fresh Prince? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> Come on. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Like You didn't watch Fresh Prince? I wasn't really in the house growing up. I was on the streets a lot. Not There's your a lot jam. of things that not I did your not. Jam. Yeah. I, I wasn't a TV person all that much. Nia Long. Okay, you got one. Come on. Come on. You can do this. I want to say Jada Pinkett, but it wasn't. Yes, yes, that's He did date her. Yes, okay. He did. All right, I'm like, not at all. Oh, no, okay. Hey. <laughs> wow. Let me just suggest. Not at all. You'll get another one. It's okay. This one, not yours. This one, okay, not yours. Okay, I, I got one, one more. You got two. Yep, you got two. Okay. You can do this. You can do it. Janet Jackson? You didn't do it. Okay. I didn't do it. No. No. We'll come back. I'll tell you the answers. Okay. Off, off camera. Okay. Okay. This is probably not your jam either. Martin. Yeah. What was his boss's name down at the radio station? Oh my God. At the radio station. Come on, radio lady. I don't remember. You know, like Stan or something like that. Stan! Stan! Yes. Stan! yes. Oh. <laughs> Wasn't in the house. You was watching. Yes! Well, that was, that's like late okay. night when you come in the house. Late night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I was in the house by then. Okay. Good job, babe. Uh, movie. This is a movie question. It's an easy one. I hope so. Y'all got to get this one, okay? What city did Craig move to to get away from Debo? What city? What talking city? about you ain't got to lie, Craig? Um, he moved away? Woo! Woo! All right. 
Right. Did, did Craig the, move to to get away from Debo? Yes. What is, what is um, it? Friday Long, too. Crenshaw? Next Friday. No. I mean, Long Beach. Long Beach. <laughs> say. What? It was in California. It was not it was, Long Beach or Watts. Uh, Beverly Hills. Right. <laughs> pass. It's okay. We'll pass. Y'all are gonna get this one. We're messing this up. This one is so easy. I'm about to say Oakland. This one is so easy. Okay. How long did Keith Sweat want to make it last? Forever. Thank you. Okay, that was an easy one. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll just do this last one. Okay. Y'all are gonna get this one too. What was Usher doing on Friday at seven o'clock? This past Friday. He was at his drop top, cruising the streets. Okay. <laughs> they did it. They did it. They did it. They did it. She said this Friday. This okay. Friday you got like, it though. You got, got it. You got it. Kyle is cracking up over here. Like. You got it. You got it. Okay. Uh what'd you get? Like two out of two out of five? Almost. Two out of five. Um, three out of five. You, you got three? three out of five. No, you got three. You got Stan. You got um yeah, that's something else. Forever. <laughs> and you got Chris and I. Okay, you got it. All right. So for the people out there who want to support your artistry, please look right here in this camera and let them know how they can find you online, how they can support your artistry, and anything you need them to know. Hi. I would love for you to support my artistry. Go to www.iamdarlene.com. You can follow me on my Instagram page at Darlene McCoy, and you'll see my name, Darlene Jackson, there. I also have a book that I released called And Then She Turned 50. You got to check that out. And uh, you can support my music. I am on all digital platforms. Just pull up Darlene McCoy. I have several, you know, several projects out there. Go check it out. Check her out. Yeah, I'm Alfonso Akhenaten Jackson. You can find me on uh, Instagram at Akhenaten, and that's A-Q-E-N-A-T-E-N. Same thing on Twitter. On Facebook is Alfonso Akhenaten Jackson. I got a couple of different things coming up. I'm starting to do my own productions. So I like to be in front of the camera, but I also like to be in back of the camera because if you really look at how things have changed, the narrative ha has changed for us throughout the generations, it's because people controlled the imagery and the narrative. So it's time for us to snatch that back and remix it and give it to y'all how it's really supposed to be given to y'all. And you can see him on Last Seen Alive, which was number one on Netflix three weeks ago. Come on. Um, with Gerard Butler. And he has movies on Amazon Prime. What's the name? Of he has um, The God of Dreams on Amazon mm -hmm. Prime. And I Wish I Never the, Met You. King of Kings. King I Wish King. I Never Met You. Yeah. Yeah, it's a couple of different ones. He said Google me. Okay. Yeah, and Google him. Go look said, at his eye and beauty. Back up my husband's name. Okay, number one on that list. I'm talking about. I love Cobra it. Kai. Yeah, he's on he, Cobra Kai. Keep naming Kai. him. You got oh, another uh, one? Yeah. Uh, Black Lightning. He's look been on um, Have and Have Nots. Listen, just, I've been watching you. Just, just, I've just been follow me. watching you. Google so. him. Check them out. Support their <laughs> artistry. Support their black love. Y'all, send this episode to a friend, okay? Because black love exists, and we have to keep these images in rotation. Another bomb episode. Thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure you like comment below if y'all know the answers that they couldn't get go ahead and drop them in the comments below or grab your deck at pullyourcard.com see you on the next episode Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. This channel is all about encouraging you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. And comment below and let me know what you want to see on the next video. Peace out.